All right, welcome back to another replay analysis of 7.27C. Today we've got a user submitted from who that be. Um, I'm going to assume you know what that means. Uh, but nonetheless, this is the Naga Siren. This is going to be ranked immortal. Um, I think it's, I'm not sure if it was three digits or four digits. I think it was three digits. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a game that uh, she actually requested. This is, uh, if you, in case you don't know, this is actually a semi-pro pro player. Her name is Meredy. She played on Brandy Sports. Um, she did. She's quite quite a good offlaner. I think that that's where I've seen her most. So it's going to be interesting seeing how she plays the core. I think the core is obviously very very different um, in terms of what you want to do. But at the end of the day, between playstyles, between a core and a support, obviously the core is way different. Um, I mean, in the, in the sense that if you're a core, you, you kind of know how to play all of the other lanes. Mid being the exception, I think that that's kind of one of those um, somewhat different lanes. And it, it takes a different set of uh, skill set, so to speak. Now, she's got a uh, mirror image already. Um, she's got three Wraith Bands queued on up. And we're going to kind of watch her for at least the first 10-15 minutes. Just to see what sort of insight we can get, especially as a Naga carry. Um, in 7.27c, we haven't seen too much of Naga. Um, but again, I think it's more of the the player than the hero at this point because Naga's still playable, especially if you can micro like this. Uh, but the roll on in got your baited. Well, I mean, it did end up just killing the illusion. So she's going to go back in, and it looks like she's going to probably body block. She's went for the creep wave. So <clears throat> starting off with the body block. Some people do it, some people don't. Um, I think that because if you don't, if you body block here. Hang on, I'm just going to use the free camera. Sometimes if they decide to not body block and let it go, sometimes the link can push actually further. Um, so just some things to note, right? It's it, it's a bit of a mind game now. So she does have a Quelling Blade, but she's kind of by herself right now. The Shaman is a little bit out of position looking to secure things in the other lanes. But um, starting off, the first last hit. That is always the best one. Oh, and the silence. Oh, my God. This is a Techies game. What have we done? I didn't know the Techies was in here. Nice roll in. Catches him out. But Shaman is kind of not the one you want to be trading on, especially with his, what, 75, 72 base hit. Um, his right clicks do a lot of work, and especially with that. Ugh. The Techies game. I did not know that. Nice shackle there. And this is, is this it with the mirror image? No. Fairy Fire. Roll in. Stops it. But that actually slows it down. And I can't see her camera on below, but it looks like she wants to protect the Earth Spirit. So, um, I, I think some players would have probably gone more for the techies. You know what I mean? And just kind of let the Shaman die to the Earth Spirit. But she definitely played it safer in the sense that she definitely secured um, the safety of the Shaman as he got away. Uh, Shaman is a little bit low, or is healed up now, probably with that self. A techies had actually used the self himself, and he's kind of... This is very interesting because it's a techies offlane. You don't see this all the time, and to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this this hero myself. I actually uh, think that the hero is a dirty, dirty hero. Um, but hey, welcome everyone else. Thank you for spamming chat. Awesome, welcome here. Welcome aboard. This is a ranked immortal game. This is going to be with Naga. So this is going to be with um, who that be. So we've got here. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and so Shaman is kind of just doing a little bit of zoning, but the techies uh, does need to be a little bit careful. One thing I'm not liking is our camera work, and and it's it's one of those things where you're kind of seeing too much of this background. When you, in my opinion, you probably want to be scouting out here. Um, but again, she's so focused on getting the last hits, it really doesn't matter. And especially when you're 12 and one, you're definitely definitely winning and definitely doing a good job here pull through from the at least the dire side or the radiant excuse me tried to get it but she sneaks it by and brings it on back so perfect aggro management there shaman um probably should be doing a little bit more zoning naga's an early level three here to kind of start things off um and if we draw first blood and that's going to be with the, the the sand king getting it in the bottom lane and again we're going to focus on the Naga, right? She's the one that r r suggested or r recommended we do this one. So we're going to see exactly what she's doing well. So we're going to miss some kills in the other lanes, but we'll get to them probably in the 15 minute or so. Um, nonetheless, Naga here, just doing really, really well. 17 and 3. So her first items is going to be straight up Wraith Bands. She had three queued up. She's got another one on the way. She's not really worrying about boots because you don't really have anywhere to move, especially when you're in this lane, right? So... Um, the techies here, like, ugh, an offlane techies, like, I don't know, like, part of me dies inside whenever I see this. I just hope to s not see any more of these heroes and putting it on my stream and then letting other people see the potential success of a techies kind of kills me inside. 
Um, but she's kind of uh, going on in here. Um, thank you for the follow. Um, but okay, so it's under tower, so she's kind of gonna push through. Let's see if she can get all the last hits. She's almost gotten every single one, so she understands the new changes in 7.7. Obviously, with the attack speed and the damage decrease, has been all over. The Shaman actually messed up the, the, the pull there. Shaman, you had one job. Um, nonetheless, Shaman is just kind of, like, if you look at it, the Techies is completely out. The Earth Spirit is actually in the mid lane, so she's gotten a lot of space to just farm up here. So, good job there, and I hope we don't get into a, uh, it looks like... Techies has completely left the lane. So I think at this point, it's just a matter of her, you know, just bouncing between the jungle camps and then just pushing out the lane whenever possible, forcing rotations. Like this Earth Spirit had to come in to kind of respect that. Uh, but she's got illusions here. It's going to consistently farm. And so let's just see how efficient she can get in terms of her farming, right? Is she RTZ levels? Well, we will see, especially since with 28 and 6 at 4 minutes, that's, that's a pretty good game so far. Um, but yeah, so... Her spirit here just has the nice one, uh, sorry, a 2-1, two, 2-2 two, two build, um, which is, I think, the right way to go. You don't really need the, the geometric grip and the silence, especially this early. Um, <clears throat> she's almost got her next set of wraith bands. I think it's on the way, and it is coming with boots, so she is happily farming. And so we'll kind of look at the other lanes, seeing as Naga's kind of be, it's going to be just Naga gaming in the sense of just consistently farming, I think. Uh, we'll check up as C as Techies does make his way back into that lane, but I don't know. Like Techies off lanes, like you're just consistently pushing out the lane with your remote mines. I mean, you're sorry, with your uh, proximity mines, that is. Um, but does have a soul ring, so the spamming can happen. Um, do you actually go stick to just kind of get something out of all the spamming that's going to happen, or do you just consistently just go with your three wraith bands and just happily farm? And you do do need to be a bit careful so you don't lose your illusions willy nilly to the uh, to the proximity mines. But uh, okay, she kills the mine and does a lot of damage on that techies who doesn't really respect that. I mean, three wraith bands is a lot, and especially with those boots, obviously you can't really get away from her, right? She has potential to do a lot of damage, and you don't want to trade. So another proximity mine just being placed, just trying to get the last hits there with 21 last hits. Not the worst thing for an offlane techies. Uh, but it, it is under tower, and that is a siege cap, or sorry, a catapult there. So, with their own siege catapult being alive, I think that'll tank most of this, so that she's not actually taking any tower damage. And she's level six at six minutes. So every single minute, this is usually reserved for like alchemists and all that. But as, seeing as if you can gain a level a minute, I think you're having a really good game. Um, and again, we're missing fights throughout, and it's it's a bit of a wash with five five one k uh, net worth lead, but. I think it just proves that the other lanes are not doing well. Um, but the Naga, just more damage. And here is the Leshrac. She does need to be a bit scared. She doesn't have Song. Uh, but she's actually turning around, and she's going to go for this. Uh, TP is coming in with a Pango, but I think it might have been too late. Yeah, she was a little bit aggressive, and Pango rolls on in, does secure at least the Techies. And the Leshrac is still here. Going to take a little bit more damage, and the Haunt has now been used, but... Yeah, that's going to dissuade any sort of further attack. But Naga, I don't know, a little back and forth here. I think that she could have played a little bit safer, been under tower, um, and let the tower do some damage on that Leshrac. But um, she really wanted that Techies. Um, he, you know, I hate Techies players myself. Oh, my God. And that Shaman just gets, like, this is what do you do. Like, even when you're shackling him, like, he, his Pulse Nova or whatever, uh, Diabolic Edict, sorry, um, is just doing a lot of AoE damage. It's pretty sick. Nice Burl strike there into this Lena stun. And they do have Spectre kind of, he has to dagger his way on back and he's just going to kind of retreat. But is this the new hotness? The meme hammer on the Spectre? Is this the first thing? Like, I mean, we've seen Blade Mail, we've seen Radiance. Obviously, Radiance takes forever to get to. And I, I, I've been seeing a lot of this, this Meteor Hammer. It just helps with farming. Um, but the kick is off the mark. And Earth Spirit will just back away here. Leshrac will just refill his bottle with that Arcane Rune. And that should be the end of it. Now, Shaman, who's been kind of running around, his presence has kind of been felt, but he's died a couple times. Um, but he's only level 3, so something to worry about there. Naga's kind of gone back into the jungle, which means that the techies can actually start doing some tower damage with all of these proximity mines. Um... But yeah, okay, so the Naga back into the jungle, just continue to push on through. They do find the Spectre 
Uh, the stun is off the mark. And yeah, that should dissuade that. Earth Spirit TP's on in. No more of a... Well, at least they're not going to continue that fight. But the Spectre has the Ring of Health. So he's kind of tanky in that sense. Can get Perseverance. But the Shackle on that one. They do have three stuns. The roll in is actually just short. Doesn't actually get it. The two-man kick, though, they do get Spectre. Oh, nope. That stick will keep him alive just for a little bit longer. The Pengo rolls in and does end up squishing him like a bug. And it looks like they're going to have to retreat. Silencer is going to go hide under tower. He's only level four, though. And Pengo with his swashbuckle. And he's going to actually secure two more kills. And that's going to be a double kill for him. Three for nothing. And Leshrac is also in. He does get shackled under. But he's there. And the tower damage is doing a lot of work. And, and does end up killing the Shaman. But through it all, the Leshrac dies in the end. And a double kill now for Sand King. So it's 11 to 9. They've created a lot of space for Naga. Who's been doing quite well in that sense. Of just getting a lot of space. If we're looking at 930. I mean, 78 last hits and 10 denies. You're having a pretty good game. So... Uh, nonetheless, they're going to go for the tower T1 bottom. They're going to glyph it on up, try to slow things down a little bit. Um, Shaman, on the other hand, is going to just try to get to level 6 as fast as possible from the mid lane. And the next big objective is going to be the 10 minute rune. Techies is kind of securing his by creating, you know, the DMZ, so to speak, in this no man's land of just mines. He does end up getting the stack as well. And, uh, yeah, he should be fine. He's using remote mines to farm? No. Okay. He's actually not even going to back up and get that rune, which is right next to him. I'm sure he's getting pinged out for that. Uh, Leshrac with a little bit more farm here is just trying to provide a little bit more space for that Spectre who has gone to the mid lane with a DD, Meteor Hammer, and Brown Boots. Hi, Rising Flames. Thanks for the follow. All right. So, Leshrac here does have, um, he's sticking around. Earth Spirit is in position. Uh, but they have a sentry ward that's a little bit farther. They do end up getting rolling on in on the Sand King. Magnetize has now been used, and he's just trying to hide, and he does get the Burl Strike, at least on the Leshrac. He was charging up the Epicenter, but he died too quickly, and they secure that uh, Lina there with a nice Dragon Slave, and that will kill that one, or the Laguna Blade. Uh, but Silencer's there, doesn't have level 6 yet, which is a bit of an issue. Actually, he's a super poor. He doesn't have Brown Boots. Okay, he just got Brown Boots at 11 minutes uh, silencer, you're not really having a good game, and I feel like this is like every silencer in my games, in the sense that he's kind of not really like silencer. You, you generally speaking, as a, like a as a support, you want to have some sort of stun. You want some sort of you know mobility, something that can kind of help you out and control the battlefield, right? And don't get me wrong, silencer is a great laner. He does obviously does some good zoning and all that, but when you're level five at 11 minutes, you haven't had that sort of impact. Right, not having the global silences, you have literally two permanent intel stolen, so you've kind of suffered. And Sand King, not really scared of you. The roll in is going to be short. He gets hexed right before he's about to hit in the shackle, and the wards will end up securing that earth, uh, the earth spirit, as well as the silencer, and that will turn into a T1 tower mid. And that's going to be the end of that, right? So you've got more space provided for the Naga, and this is kind of like that old anime storyline of which is the stronger late game right do you want a naga on your team or do you want a specter at the end of the day and i think that generally speaking at least in my games i've seen more in 7.27c i've definitely seen more specter i haven't seen too much naga um that said again it's going to come down to how the naga manages the entire um the map how she kind of controls everything how she kind of um takes over right i think that her split pushing is almost unmatched that silencer yeah not even level six it's gonna get run up there and that's gonna be a dead silencer as well uh he's not that smart right now i mean speaking of which as the player and the fact that the hero is only two intel stolen um he does need to find out some sort of pickoffs right and it, he definitely does scale infinitely um nonetheless uh naga does have the yasha is gonna get manta up first where Spectre does have the Meteor Hammer, the Meme Hammer. And this is probably going to do a little bit of tower damage. I was assuming that she will probably, yeah, she's going to back off, realizing that, you know, something's not right. You do get that spider sense. And the Haunt has now been used, but this will just kind of throw people off as it's thrown me off. And she actually made her way to the bottom lane. Um, so Leshrac here, one thing to note is that... Generally speaking, if you're going to play like a mid lesh, I feel like you need to be more of that pushing type. You want to be controlling, creating a lot of space. Think of yourself like as a Pugna, where you're not always uh, 
I mean, you do fall off in the end, but if you can start taking early towers, I think you're just going to create a bunch of space and make your life a lot easier for your team. Uh, that said, a smoke has now been used, uh, but can they find anything? Uh, oh, the swashbuckle just kills the techies. He was just up on Tinder. He was just wiping right, and all he was trying to do was just, you know, get the girl's phone number, but he dies in the end at the remote bind. Huh? It does end up triggering but the sand king is actually a little bit tanky taking only about 700 damage and that should be the end of that so you've killed two right what do you do is the dire you need to push you need to create some space take out that t2 or at least put some pressure on it haunt is down you know that um oh sand king it freaks me out every time i see him near mines and again this is why i hate techies i think you're a terrible person if you play techies um but yeah oh he walks right by but okay he's not gonna get He's not going to trigger them, realizing the Sand King is a little bit tankier. But okay, let's wreck. Took out that T1. I felt like he should have done that about five minutes ago, but you know, uh, who am I to judge? Um, and he does have uh, an illusion of rune if he wants to do anything. Naga getting a little bit scared is actually going to TP away. Uh, she doesn't have a TP. Another TP, right? You got to buy the Costco special. Usually not six, but at least three, I would say. Um, but always have that on standby because you never know when you might need it, especially when you can song on out and keep yourself alive. But her farm has been on point. If we're looking at net worth, like she's definitely scaling, right? But I think that once she gets the Manta, I think that we're going to see a pretty big power spike and for her to actually continue pushing with her team. And space is the name of the game, right? Especially in this type of game where you have two late game heroes. Um, you definitely want to be pushing in and just taking advantage of any sort of advantage that you might get. Any sort of gap in the enemy line, so to speak. Oh, they get the silence, but the oh, the rolling boulder actually pushed the Leshrac out of the wards, which will frustrate you, but okay, the Laguna Blade will secure that one, and P Pangos continue to go on through. The roll-in is going to stop it, magnetize the Burl Strike, and is going to silence him up, but the Earth Spirit is on the wrong side of this proximity mine doing a lot of damage, but, and that's the kill by the Techies, who's going to run on back. They got a 3 for 1 so far, but you did secure the Pango. I don't know if that was really worth it in the end, especially a 4 for 1. Very good trade. This is actually turning really good for the Dire team, right? Naga? Having a field day using illusions. Uh, and he baits it out with the illusions. Really nice. Okay, so this... You've got four down. I don't... I feel like you need to be... Uh, well, you'll probably push this as well with your creep wave once you move on forward. Your illusion's doing a little bit more damage. But can you get the T2 damage? Or, sorry. Can you get any sort of T2 damage at this point? Uh, Spectre farming the only place where people are not, which is in the top lane, does have phase. It's going to be getting Radiance up first. Um, very late, especially since the Meteor Hammer was first. Uh, oh, the Rebo Bites! Oh, God, it scares me. Every time he walks through, Inspector just walks right back into it. He's going to bait it out. And, no, no, oh, there we go. That's yeah, going to be the end of that one. Completely gerbated into that bear trap. And they were pinging all over. I mean, that's the one way of helping the techies. The Shaman's going to die in the end. A double kill for techies so far. The Roland does secure on the uh, onto the Pango. Pango's going to try to get himself on out of there. Tried to Rolling Boulder, but no. The Swashbuckle, he's getting low. And then he's now he gets the Rolling Thunder on through. Naga not having the mana. The Silence, uh, the song has already been used. He's running for his life. He's been used up. This Leshrac is just going to run up in. And Rolling Boulder without the Boulder. And that's enough to actually secure that. And they've completely turned this around. They've gotten four kills to nothing. And wow, they've completely turned that around. And that's going to be more space. And how do the Radiant team respond to that? I mean, this is way closer to the Radiance. He should be getting it in about, what, 20 or so minutes? Especially at the Radiance farming. If, you know, if he gets that T2... It's going to be even more gravy, but all the creeps are in the bottom lane, so Spectre just TPs on back. And, uh, okay, we're looking at itemization, right? Uh, Maelstrom, very very aggressive, going into defusal, right? And that's kind of the Pengo playstyle. Lean, on the other hand, just says Aether's going to get Yules on bond next. Um, I'm actually wondering if Yules would have been better than... Oh, okay, well, that's a dead Pengo. R.I.P. Um... But I'm wondering if the Yules would have been better than the Aether, just to kind of start things off. Because you kind of can start the fight off with that guy. Uh, mind you, the Blink is... Uh, the Sand King does have Blink, which is good. Uh, obviously has the Veil, we've been seeing that, and does have the Yules up on next. So they do have on outs. Shaman dies again, so that's... You know, they've completely turned this around, right? The, the Dire Team were just rolling, and they've... They've struggled. 
right? They've had some bad fights. Uh, so nice pickoffs by the Radiant team. Some good five-man team fights, actually. Um, and Naga is actually going to Fusel as well as Pango. So this is a little bit of a miscommunication on the team. Obviously, you don't want, you don't have to have, well, I don't recommend two of the same items. Um, but let us see if that continues. Maybe they make the call out and be like, hey, I got it. You don't need to get it. But, I mean, I think Defusal works way better than Naga, right? Just because the illusions and everything just kind of rack on up. But, man, there are so many mines all over the place. This is becoming a problem. Oh, he walks right into this. And that's going to be F. Silencer's like, ha, <laughs> I'll just get a little smarter off of that guy. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. Secures the kill. Silencer just needs to be in the uh, general vicinity. Oh my god. Not smart enough to see that one coming. You didn't think that that was kind of dangerous? I mean, the Silencer right here literally has like no items. And he's going to be going Midas because he realizes Naga's going to go late. Spectre's going to be going late. This game is probably not going to end in the next 20 minutes. So Midas isn't the worst call. Um, again, probably happens more in my games than anything else. Um, but I think it's a very late Midas, especially on a silencer, but, uh, if you think the game is going to go on forever, it's not the worst item in the world, especially since Midas has been buffed. It's a lot cheaper now, um, and in 7.27c. So roll on in, just saving his boulders, he does have a dust in case it needs to go, and as well as a smoke. But silencer, just kind of face tanking these things. Oh, the burl, the burl strike catches on two. The roll in on the back end magnetized. Global silence has now been used. Silencer, that was his only job, and he gets it off. Spectre is gonna haunt. Nope, he's gonna just try to dagger himself out. He's so low, and the pango does secure him. The earth spirit gets stopped. His rolling boulder not connecting, and they're gonna continue to go on in. The rolling thunder rolling out. Asian driver, beep beep. He hits. Oh. He hits a wall. He actually did not hit the Leshrac. It's a three for two so far. And the Naga is now in position. Uh, the Naga's slowly doing some damage. But, you know, the amount, what? The Diabolic Edict and as well as the Pulse Nova just doing a lot of AoE damage. And that will just stop the Naga in his tracks. Um, but, yeah. Let's continue pushing on in the bottom lane. They did get the Spectre. So, all in all, not the worst kill to have gotten. Um... But yeah, this techies is just a problem with Ags now, already at 21 minutes. I, I wish I could report this guy. Like, I I'm trying my darnest. Um, sorry, I hate techies games, because it just adds like 30 minutes to the game. Win or lose, he just adds time, right? And, and sometimes I just want to end the game, right? Like, I don't want to go, like, techies and like sniper, like, on opposite teams. Oh my gosh, that game is going to go like three hours. I hope to God this game is three hours. Um, but Naga just continuing to push, happily farming. One thing that I I, ha I I have noticed is the fact that the Naga, while she's gotten two big items, she really hasn't been taking advantage of... Oh, gosh, the Shaman just dies there. Like, the peaks that she's getting, right? Seeing as that she's gotten two big items, I feel like she should be putting more pressure on. They should be ganking in, like, maybe even death ball in it or trying to. I mean, the more time you're giving the techies, the more he's going to be able to fortify everything. Which is, just makes your life miserable, but... Um, oh, the bro strike! Oh, but the dialogue eating just kills him on the back end. It was just an accident. Oh, the roll on in, the magnetize, catches on to two heroes. He's going to rolling boulder on out. He's very low, he's been rooted on up, and the swashbuckle will end up killing him. The silencer was like, I don't even want, know why I came here, and just dies as collateral damage on that. So Naga here. Manta, Diffusal, this is going to get hard up on next. Um, but yeah, I would I would like to see her pushing more, right? She does have, like, the more you can push and force the fact that, you know, like, the, make the techies fortify in the high ground as opposed to right in front of, like, the T2s and, like, the open areas, right? If you force him back and create, take away space, oh, nice hex up on there, and they do get the stun, the Spectre. Shackled as well, and he just dies to the disruption. The shaman is just like, sucks to be a support, right? Um, but dies in the end on that one. But they did secure the specter, so not all in all. This is one of those things where you put in all chat worth, uh, even though you died embarrassingly, I would say. So, uh, Pango getting Abyssal. Dragon Scale on the Lena. I think this is a type where. I'll just take any neutral item. Sometimes you can't be picky, especially when you're a beggar. Um, but, okay, you've got the nice little pupil's gift on the Naga, which just kind of buffs her up a little bit throughout. Um, and Techie is just being an asshole, right? Just 
continue to fortify, putting places of, you know what I mean? Like this, somebody will go up this ramp at some point, right? This will affect the game at some point. Leshrac just getting rolled up on. Burl Strike does catch him. And so Leshrac has actually had to yules himself on up. The Magnetize is there. Does nice little kick in. But Leshrac is very, very low. He dies in the end. And they've got the Burl Strike. And they did catch the Earth Spirit. And they're going to get more. And the Laguna will definitely... Well, it didn't actually end up getting the kill. But the Shaman just probably getting that right click. And does secure that. And that's a two for nothing. 31-24. Continue to push. Take, make use of this space, right? Um, and this is the first time we've seen the Naga and Spectre fight one-on-one. -on -one. How does it start? With a Meteor Hammer. Duh. Uh, Diffusal slows down the Spectre. The nice little net there, not letting him buy. But the Naga's actually kind of losing this fight. Does need to be a bit careful. It's going to song on out and TP on w away. So, yeah. This is like every single bar fight, right? One guy's kind of losing. and be like, oh, shit. Get on out of here. Uh, but Sand King just dodges that remote mine, kind of walks away. The dagger's going to miss, but the blink... Oh, okay, I thought the dagger would hit from the long range. But nonetheless, they're kind of moving into position. Naga does not have Song and is kind of far away from this potential team fight. Um, but there's a bunch of wards and kind of scouting everything out. And Techie's just being an asshole, continuing to fortify, has even Roshan covered. I mean... Where can you go? Where can you go? Right? Like, how do you... Like, I feel like he's put mines everywhere. Like, in your in your girlfriend's bedroom? Like, literally... Oh! And that's... <laughs> dead Lena. Yeah, explodes there. And again, more reasons why I hate techies. Um, please don't do this in your pubs. Okay. So, Naga here. What is the next one? Scotty up next. Pango continue to push. Does Is going to get Greaves. Okay. A little bit sustaining... Um, realizing that he's been getting just destroyed. He's been getting picked off in the end and, you know, other ways to kind of deal with uh, the amount of AoE damage that the Leshrac has been putting out. Sand King, on the other hand, uh, is going to be going Hood and probably into Pipe, which is great. Another way to kind of negate some of the damage that the Leshrac does. Um, but yeah, Leshrac kind of by himself. The Rolling Thunder. Obviously, Magic Immune. Very good. Oh, and here comes the Haunt. But Spectre did not want to haunt into that. Does not have the dagger. No mana for it with the Diffusals. When you have two, this is what he's done. But he's gotten some stuff stuck into the trees. But the... the yeah, and he's going to Burl Strike and he's going to kill him. The, mind you, the Sandstorm was actually slowly whittling him down. Kind of like Chinese Water Torture. Uh, but Sand King actually getting the kill with a Burl Strike. And that should be the end of that. So you've gotten two for one. What is the call? Somebody pinged Roche, but I don't know. It's kind of dangerous. I feel like you need to consist consistently push, continue on, get at least a T2, because that'll, again, open things up for the outposts. Uh, the mirror images, just going to try to tank up some of that. And they're being super cautious, right? The techies is in position. They know they don't know how many mines he has. They don't have the bomb squad ready. But they did find at least the techies in the back end. Please let them die. Every time a techie dies, part of me just, you know... I just get happier. Uh, the Laguna does not actually kill the Silencer. Very, very low. But the Naga is here. The Yule's up on the left track. Just keeping him alive just for a little bit longer. The net on in. But, oh my gosh, the song. Yeah, this is the Epicenter's being charged. What do you do? Okay, they, they stopped the song a little bit early. But Sand King getting a little low. Naga faked the TP. Was about to it, but then cancels it on out. They want more. And the roll on in. They do find the, at least the Lena, who's very, very low. Oh, they're under tower. Naga is going to be able to outfight this. Spectre is back. And the shackle, they do end up securing for the Earth Spirit. And I don't think Naga was 100% comfortable with that fight. I mean, she wanted to TP on out, but saw that the fight was kind of winnable. Kind of in that weird stage. It was 50-50. But in the end, she chose incorrectly. These wards will just, you know, do a little bit of damage. It'll tickle the Spectre and just further enrage her. And just, she'll just want to kill you. She'll just eat you up, Shaman. Unfortunately, not much you can do, especially with the Radiance Yasha. Uh, she's got three ultimate orbs queued on up. I mean, she's going to get Scotty at some point with that combination, but she's going to get the Manta first um, to fight in, and she should be even if we're looking at net worth. It's neck and neck. Very, very close, right? And so this is the thing where we, we laughed at the Meme Hammer, right? It doesn't always, uh, but the fact that you can actually push waves. Oh, that's going to be pretty nice. The Orb of Destruction on the Spectre here. That should do even more damage. Um, I think the Lena shouldn't be chasing the Spectre. Like, I feel like 
Okay, okay. Yule's on up in this, into the stun. The TP's coming. Yeah, I don't know what the point of that was, Lena. She's been slowed down by the dagger. Um, Earth Spirit is here to babysit the Spectre. But that's pretty much the end. The roll on in, the slow one. That's the, like the old uh, Toyota as opposed to like the Lamborghini style. Uh, nonetheless, Leshrac has pushed the top lane, does have Kaya. Love it, because it, you know, I love to say Kaya Toast. Uh, Techie's doing more of a job, and just, not only is he, like, normally you see, like, defensive minds, like this side, right? But the fact that now, he's had so much time, he's aggressively mining. He's aggressing, <laughs> aggressively mining your home base. And all of these remotes will actually create enough space that, you, you know, if a team fight happens at Roche, he's protected, right? And so the Spectre is here, going to throw out that Meteor Hammer. Leshrac is bringing the damage to uh, to Roche. And this should be quick work. Uh, Aegis will probably go to uh, Spectre. Give that another 30 seconds. But it's going to be 30 minutes. Runes, XP. If we're looking at outposts, uh, the Dire control both of them. So they're not going to get that XP, at least at this point. Uh, Naga here with Diffusal. Almost has Scotty. Um... The roll? Oh, misses the pango, but they did find him. The silence, the haunt has now been used. They do find the pango, and they're going to go for this. Global silence, he swashbuckles away, and that's going to dissuade him. Pango rolling thunder, he's very low, and he gets stuck on the wall. He just does a U-turn, and now he's bugged in. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a bug. That's a bug. Getting stuck in that wall, like, all right. When, when you get stuck in, like, a, uh, a, a, dead, a dead alley, <laughs> that's kind of what happens. The roll in? Obviously, with that talent, is just massive. The 325. Yeah, the rolling boulder distance. It's pretty long, but he did miss. And it's a little bit harder. Sometimes you go um, way further than you want to, and you just kind of make yourself look like a dick. Uh, but now, Techies, this is the problem, right? He's had more time, more space, and now he's, he's mining your jungle, right? So all that farm that you wanted... The Meteor Hammer being channeled hits the Creep Wave as well. So that's going to be the end of that very, very quick. And he's kind of pulled away, right? If we're looking at the Naga dead, obviously. Um, but they need to defend high ground here. They get the Burl Strike at least up on the Spectre. The Roland misses. Uh, they've gotten the Silencer so far, who's just been... His positioning has been off. The Yule's up on the Earth Spirit, and that should be the end of that. The Burst Strike on oh, the Shackled, Crowd Control. I mean, Lena does so much work. I think that she's been buffed quite a lot. So the amount of damage she brings with all of this control, just easy peasy. Shaman will slowly walk away with this, what is this, the Arcane Curse? Look at how slow he walks. 291. Um, but he's going to go back into the fountain. Sand King will just kind of push out the top lane. And Techies just doing more Techies things, right? Like, look at this mana regen. 21.5. Um, he's got Soul Ring, so like pretty much whenever they're off cooldown, he can place mines. And to be honest, I can't count how many there are, but there are many. So I'm sure he's done the math in terms of how much HP they have versus how many mines he needs. A good techies player will tell you that. Um, but yeah, this I think it's the Scotty will help because obviously the damage and the fact that she needs to be buffed up. The set of remote mines explodes, doesn't actually kill anyone, so... Um, okay, but they do need to be careful with this one. I don't think it's going to kill. It, she just can't go very low. That's the, pretty much it. So, she's trying to keep herself into this game. What does she need to do? She needs to probably be splitting. I feel like she's been stuck into her jungle too much, and she hasn't been using, she hasn't been microing her uh, images and making and pushing out all the lanes. Like, usually that's like the, the Radiant style old school Naga where they control everything. And they just kind of force you all on back. Now, the Silencer, again, really bad positioning. Haunts is going to be here. Does have Aegis. They're going to get this Shaman. And he's looking to fight. He's actually channeling the Meteor Hammer. And he dies. But the Aegis has just been popped. He was just trying to pop the Meteor Hammer. On the remote mines, they do end up killing the uh, Pango on that side. And the Spectre will die. Does have buyback. But I'm pretty sure you don't want it to buy back here. The Net does catch up on the Silencer. The Burl Strike. They roll on in now. The Magnetize. And here comes the Leshrac. They're going to look to turn this. They do have Silence. Did she have song? She did have song. Uh, I think she was just a little late on that. She was late on that button. Oh, man. Not hitting that song actually could have saved her life. I mean, I think that... Uh, yeah, that could, that was a really bad turn of events. The Leshrac coming in, especially with the magnetize and everything. And I feel like... Okay, the pipe... Like, 
it's been non-existent because the fights have been so scattered, right? He hasn't been able to cast that on his own team. Um, but this Leshrac is, if we're looking at damage, I'm pretty sure this guy's tops, right? So his magic damage needs to be stopped. Obviously, pipe, BKB, all of these things, these good magic defense items are required. But when you've wiped out the team, and like, he's got the AoE to pretty much kill everybody. who are kind of squishy. Um, deals with the images very, very well. Um, but yeah... So we're going to go in the bottom lane. It's going to push it on out, take out all of the outer towers, force them to stay high ground. And this is kind of how you you win out games, right? You starve them out, you choke them out, you control all of the in, the entire map with good wards. Uh, you don't let them out of their, you know, your high ground. And so Naga has a lot less space to farm. And you know what I mean? In, in the anime battle between the Spectre and Naga, it's pretty much who gets fattest, right? Um... Spectre almost, I mean, still has a, like, a couple slots for to get six slotted. Uh, but if we're comparing that to, like, the Naga who just got a Siren, still, still a ways away, right? You're still behind. Obviously, I would probably be, like, as a carry, I obviously would want to be the Spectre in this case. Because look at this map control. Like, if we're just looking at the, like, this is how much control they have. And this is the power of the techies. Uh, I can't believe I said that, but... It's forcing, like, this is an aggressive techies, and he's actually done a really good job of taking advantage and providing space, right? And, and you don't have to risk yourself because of the fact that your minds do all the damage for you, right? Um, that said, it's kind of tough to deal with the silencer or the haunt in one more time. Almost every time they catch out that silencer, he's been looking to be bait to the silence. The Yule's on up. Wow, he haunts into the next one. Really well played there, and he's going to end up killing the Lena. Silencer getting a little bit smarter. 32 now. That's somewhat respectable. I think this guy can read a book now, which is awesome. Uh, but 32 is stolen intel at 35 minutes. Not the worst thing in the world. And Silencer scales, right? So this is why, if you've got a Spectre, if you've got like some sort of late game that's going to kind of provide that, and you're going to have a Techies, you're, you're guaranteed to get some sort of intel. You're going to get stronger. You're going to get, you know, back in this. And the fact that he's had Midas, and so even in levels... He's coming back in, right? He's not the lowest of the, you know, like this shaman. Uh, yeah, really suffering, right? 12 deaths is a lot. And I, I, to be honest, the 1600 life is becoming a problem. And every time he shackles, he's actually been dying to like the disruption of the, the specter. So a little bit of a fight here. They do get the shackle on the Leshrac, who's actually just trying to split push the roll on out by the Earth Spirit. And that should be ending at least that. Leshrac does not have buyback, but... Back to the Shaman, one thing to note is that if you, instead of the BKB, and while you do need a BKB at some point, um, I think early game it probably would have been helped to, more helpful if you went Bracers, right? Just to kind of have a little bit more survivability, a little bit more HP, that goes a long way. Um, remote Mind's killing the images, and more farm going the way of the techies. And look at, look at that, he's just, the stasis traps just kind of like covering his retreat. And oh my god, I don't know which one's worse, the front one or the back one? Right? Who's the dick here? Who do you not like? I hate both of these guys. Like, he's got a bazooka, but like he doesn't really use the bazooka. Like I don't know. He's, he's like a telescope. What is that? Nonetheless, Naga here pushing through. Thank you, Blower Bjor. Bjor one for the follow. Thank you so much. Um, and just some something to note is that I actually cast analyze games all the time. I do this weekdays, um, one to four. Uh, but if you've got a game. I, I, I'm more than happy. It doesn't matter what level you are. Obviously, this game is a ranked immortal game. But if you want your game casted, analyzed, feel free to send me the game ID and I'll get to your game. Um, I do have three other games and I'll get that. Or I can probably get to you probably later this week. Nice roll in there. The, the silence as well as geometric grip. And now the hex and the back end. And yeah, you can't get away from this Earth Spirit with his four second cooldown on that rolling boulder. He's going to find you. DD on that Spectre, just making your life miserable. And he does have Titan Silver right titan sliver sorry i said silver uh but yes very very tanky obviously all of the stats that you're gonna get and especially when you're dd right so he can kind of swap that up as he needs to i think that that's definitely something um yeah j games for the win send me your game id i don't know if i can get it to you today uh, i do have two other games that i'm gonna go to at least for other people but maybe later in the week maybe tomorrow um but yeah i'll be happy to get that too um, just let me know what hero you are, the game ID, and then um, I'll just kind of follow you around, at least for the first 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, we'll turn that around. And thank you for the follow, James Games, for the win. Uh, but yeah, send me that game ID.
All right, so Pango here, just doing a little bit more farming. Does have Invis, has the eggs at this point, right? Um, does, is going to go MKB next. But at the end of the day, who is going to be able to fight this Spectre? It obviously needs to be this Naga, but, like, she got the Manta at a decent timing, the Diffusal a little bit slower, but then she got a late Scotty, and it, I, I realize it's only 38 minutes, right? Like, at the lower levels, obviously this is a really good game, um, but in this game where she's trying to be efficient, um, she's kind of struggled because of the fact of all of this map control, right? And she hasn't been able to do that split push, like the traditional, the, the Naga that's kind of everywhere, um, the omnipotent Naga that's pushing everything, farming everything, providing all this, uh, this control, because the heroes, if you're looking at it, I feel like they did a really good job of countering, right? Like, the Spectre can fight it at the end of the day. The Leshrac obviously deals with all of the images. Um, and, of course, the Techie is just providing all that, you know, that map control with these... Look at this! Look at the vision! Right? Look at this. This is this is every, this is Radiant's vision right here, right? This is everyone's vision, and then this is the Radiant vision. Like, it almost, like, like literally... Nothing is cut off. Like, this is the dire. Like, it's completely half. Like, they have 70% or so, right? Like, the fact that he's provided so much vision has just made it super difficult for the Naga to get any sort of farm. Um, one thing to note, she does not have buyback, so she's kind of going all in. She's trying to get as much as she can, and she's wasting a lot of time not being able to farm, right? Because even your own team is farming, stealing your farm, right? At the end of the day, if your Naga is going to win you the game, right, you got to give the Naga the farm, right? So the BM tip, the first aggressive tip of the day, Earth Spirit realizing that Naga is the one, so they need to get inside her head. And then what do they do? They do the BM tip, and then they put the bounty up on the Naga. And here comes a smoke. This is the first, well, they did. there was another smoke, I think, at like, you know, 15 minutes or so. But we haven't seen the Dire team being too aggressive. They've been, been on, on the back foot the, almost the entire time. And it's funny because they actually have more kills. But space-wise, they haven't been able to make what... Uh, they haven't been able to make use of it, so to speak. And yeah, the, the next big objective was Roche. Spectre getting it back in. This is the second one. Cheese. Who's got cheese? Probably the Leshrac, right? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. Does has it in the back? Maybe he's lactose intolerant. Um, does not actually want to use the cheese. Um, but yeah, Greaves is gonna go MKB. We just talked about him. Silencer has force. Has Midas and is gonna be going. Um, has got something on the way. What is it? BKB. What is this? Yeah, BKB. And is going to be going Aghanim's next. So the Silencer is actually going to start doing some right-click damage. Definitely something that you're going to have to worry about. He does turn into a core later. Um, so they do need to fear that. But how do they get up on this? How do they find the right initiation? Right, the Leshrac with a nice Yules up on up. The Split Earth. Nope. The Swashbuckle. Away. And that will end that. Really nice quick, quick finger, so to speak. Um, and through it all, Spectre and Naga... Just, uh, they're both declaring this lane is theirs. But I think at the end of the day, the Naga probably needs to respect the fact that the Silence or the Spectre is definitely, uh, has the better items, net worth wise. Naga completely, not completely falling off, but when you're 5k behind, this is a bit of an issue, right? Um, and through that all, they're going in the top lane. The BKB's now been used. This, the uh, the rolling boulder, the haunt in, and is coming on in. It doesn't matter what lane you're in. The song will stop that. Oh, and the Leshrac just doing a lot of damage. He actually stops that, and he looks to turn. Well, what can they get? The epicenter has now been channeled, and he's going on through. They're going for the Leshrac. They're trying to get him down, but he cheeses on up. The net in as well. He's taking, like, next to no damage. The Spectre's on the other end, who's been stuck in the wards, but I don't really think they have the damage for this. Tesh, oh my god, the Techies is actually blinking on forward, and he does end up getting that one. They do kill the Lena. And this Techies is like, uh, I don't know why I'm high ground now. The Spectre is here, buddy. Big Brother has come along, and they're looking to do a lot of damage. They do f to get the Hex up on the Sand King. The buyback from the Pango, looking to turn this. They get the Long Range Shackle. It's going to stop on that. And they're looking to get, again, they're focusing on this Leshrac. But, man, he has been super tanky. 4,000 life. How do you get through that? The Yule's up on the Earth Spirit. And the, it looks to be the end of that. This, and the Shackle's from the high ground. He gets killed in the end the diabolic edict and the greaves has now been used 
Oh, and they're looking to just kind of fight this, but how? Everybody's so low. Naga's just running for her life now. And there's really no way to get away. And the bounty's been claimed. The disrespect. And here we go. The repair kit doing as much healing as possible on that T3. But this is going to be quick work, especially with that Leshrac there. A little bit of backstroke. Yules, the back, the bad, the BM. I mean, we've got it all in this game, right? Pushing the top lane, mid racks. Uh, you do have buyback, but buyback for what, right? Like, I think that's, uh... Oh, wow. Okay. I thought the Naga had buyback, but I think she just bought something. So, uh, yeah. And they're going to go for T4s. It looks like the push has been called. And they don't really care. Because, I mean, at this point, to be honest, why not? If you if you attack it and then they buy back, it makes sense to back off. But, you know, you, you have a little bit of time before that happens. But it looks like the Dire team have given up. Techies is actually going to be the one that buys back, and that's going to be the end of the game. So 46-44. I mean, you saw that the Dire team was winning, but net worth-wise, they were definitely losing. All of that space provided. But yeah, super rough. Super rough. But nonetheless, very good game. Thank you so much for that submission. Obviously, Naga, we have... Um, we can... We, there, you didn't really seem to be farming the making the most use out of the map i would say i think that you're kind of stuck in your own jungle and then when you did get your big items like you got manta you got diffusal i think once you got those two items i think that you should have just looked to fight every single time and and i know that you it, you're somewhat hesitant to do so because of the fact that there's a techies um i mean he stops everything right he stops like all pushes and he's super annoying but using the images to kind of split it out so that you're creating space so that even techies minds are in the back i think that probably would have been something to note uh, but mind you radiant team almost everybody aside from this silencer who is completely out of position almost every single team fight uh was kind of on point right like i think we talked enough about you know earth spirit just providing spaces his roll-ins were on point the silences everything that you saw was just really well played and we saw that with obviously four digit ranked immortals this is what the, the high level dota we get um, very clinical in that sense once you've controlled the map and that's going to be the game thank you so much for uh, tuning in I do this every single day on my Twitch uh, I post up the videos on YouTube please give me a follow on Holler TV and I will catch you guys next time thank you so much uh -huh.